Sorry, guys. We're here. We're excited to have you. Absolutely. Welcome back to the Love Is Podcast. This is, wow, this is our first solo episode. I'm kind of excited yes. about this. This is a very special episode because today is all about us. And Absolutely. it's all about what we stand for. Yes. It's all about what we feel love truly is. Yes. Which is? Well, the Love Is Podcast, for me, I believe, is super intentional in regards to touching on different tools and um, ways that we can navigate through how to properly love each other, whether that's our friendships, our relationships, our family ships, or just people in general. Like, I think that we definitely, you know, we were raised a certain way and those things, you know, they've worked for us all of our lives, but it doesn't help to imp implement other tools, like new tools to just kind of evolve and elevate our ways of communication and loving on each other so yes that's and what this platform is about we're here for the evolution we're here for the journey yes. and we know that love is the most important thing the only real thing through it all absolutely so that's our number one message that's what we promote that is our intention yes. when we wake up every morning when we come here to do this podcast we are focused on truly what love is Amen. and that presents itself in so many beautiful ways through us our actions all that we stand for and just all of our goals and it feels great it feels amazing um you guys it is 9 a.m right now in los angeles <laughs> we are up early at the crack yes so let's get to it you know what i mean let's i'm super it. excited um the first question of the day is oh, are we gonna do our games or what are we gonna go right into the questions what are we doing hmm i think for a little icebreaker we'll get into the games okay so we are going to start off with a game, excuse me. We're not starting off with questions. And <laughs> my lovely co-host here has put up some questions in this bowl. Honey, I don't even know what's about to happen, but we're going to figure this out. All right. Okay. Question number one. Wait, is this, this for, for me or for you? I was about to ask you that. I'm like, wait, are you going to ask me? I think I'm, okay, I'm going to ask you first. Okay. I don't know if I'm ready for what you put in this bowl. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, this is cute. Okay. What is your favorite zoo animal? And I'm going to add the why. Oh, oh man. I'm First of all, I'm such an animal lover. <laughs> yes, y'all, she is. <laughs> it's the wildlife reserves for me, honestly. No shade. Well, yeah, shade to the zoos, okay? It's the life reserve animals. Okay, let's see. I went to Atlanta's wildlife reserve and the zebras there are amazing. I've always loved zebras as a kid, but one, they're just wild. First mm -hmm. of all, they tell you feed all the animals except the zebras oh. because they're they're buck wild. And that's me, you know? <laughs> like, I'm very black and white as well. I don't like any gray areas in life. So I would have to go with the zebra because they're just like, first of all, they're multiple things in one. They're something like a horse. But it's incredible and it's magical. It's almost like you're looking at a unicorn. So. That's bomb. I actually haven't even re like related a horse to Z before. But that's so <laughs> funny that you like black and white because your Dalmatian babies yes. are also black and white. Like, I'm yes. putting two and two together. You yes. are clearly obsessed with that This pattern. or that. <laughs> black or white. You know, okay. I freaking love it. Okay. Yes. Let's see what let's you got see. next. Let's get you together real quick. <laughs> Now, I'll put some surprises in here oh for her. Lord. Oh, okay. And it's funny because you actually about to leave me. <gasps> Don't say it like that. <laughs> Y'all, I'm literally flying to Turks and Caicos at 1 a.m. And I would love for Erin to be with me, but she's going to see mommy this weekend. So yes. that's going to be even better. Yes. Happy Mother's Day. Yes. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We love y'all. <laughs> okay. What's your favorite type of foreign food? Ooh. Foreign food. Hmm. I don't even know. Okay, that's a lie. I will say probably more times out of, like, 
my meals, I'm going to eat Mexican. Like, really? whether that's four times a week, whether it's six times a week, <sighs> whether that's 12 times, like, a month. Like, no, I love Mexican food. And it's not, like, just one particular dish or anything. Mm-hmm. I think, for me, it's just all the flavors. Like, I love spicy food. And if I'm making vegan dishes, like, I can still enjoy the dish mm-hmm. and it be like full Mexican, but you got your avocado, all your vegetables, all your fajitas and stuff. Even jackfruit tacos. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like you can really have fun with vegan food and it be Mexican. It's really difficult to make other food vegan. That's not so carby. You know what I mean? I've been seeing Jamaican vegan food lately and I've been like, what? You can get oxtails out of that. (laughs) Like I'm here for it. (laughs) <laughs> I guess because, you know, I love Jamaican food too, but I don't know the spices and stuff, so that's yeah. a little bit more difficult. That takes some years. I, I could see that takes some time to learn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, question number two for my little baby. What is your favorite thing about your career? Oh, you never know what you're going to get. Oh, that's cute. I love it. I love it. Too. I love the surprise. First of all, when I get an audition, I'm like, who is this for? What did they want me to do? <laughs> like, it's like always a surprise, but I'm always going to kill it. So it's You like, always do, for sure. Because you, <laughs> she stays booked. Let's just go there. Okay, stay Thank booked. You. But booked and blessed. <laughs> I feel the same way. I feel like um, being an actress, like we for sure get to like have fun and be all these imaginary characters as a yeah. job. It's really kind of crazy. Yeah, it's fun. It's like I'm forever playing like, I don't know, play exactly. or dress up or exactly. house. I don't know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's a surprise, but it's fun. Yeah. And I get to like challenge myself at the same time, which I love doing. Yeah, that's definitely the bomb. Ooh, I got a surprise one oh, in no. here for you. <laughs> here we are. Okay. Are you ready? I guess. It's a surprise. I threw this in here. When something is wrong, do you turn away from people or towards people? Ooh. Why do you do this to me? Okay. <laughs> um, I'm actually working on being able to turn towards people. So I don't want to say that I am a certain way because I do believe that I'm in the middle of a transition with that. Mm-hmm. Um, being more comfortable asking for help. Ooh, this is a challenge for me. Because I don't be asking nobody for anything, mm-hmm. especially with emotional help. That is super, like, tough for me. Yeah. But... I definitely feel like it's an area that I'm enjoying working through yeah, and, like, navigating. Because I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. Sometimes you can find that answer within just kind of, like, meditating and talking to God. But um, if you need advice or you just feel like you're at a roadblock and there's somebody that you trust and you have a safe space with, then exploring that conversation is definitely healthy. I agree, one hundred percent. I'm the same. Yeah, I'm very like go within. Like I have the answers from within. Like it's not. It's beyond me. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not even just because of my life experiences, but because we're all one. Like I'm a part of the Almighty, so I can really tap in. But I also have my trusted friends, my baby. Yes. You know, I gotta go to Ayana. <laughs> I gotta go to my man. I have to have these. And that's why it's so important to have the right people in your life yes. because I have to have these good reflections to tell me what's real. When I'm in the midst of it, I have to have someone to sometimes say, well, babe, look, this is that and this is that. And I'm mm-hmm. like, you're right. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I need perspective. That. <laughs> yeah, that perspective is is bomb. All right. So we are moving through these. Okay, so what are we going to do? Like two more? Yes. Okay. <laughs> this is a good one. What is your favorite book to read? Oh, okay. I don't want to pick one. <laughs> I love reading. Reading really? reading is life, yes. Even if I'm not sitting down reading a book, I have books playing. While I'm cleaning my house, while I'm driving, I listen to books more than anything. I can do that. Audiobooks are way more fluid for me. Yes. But the patience to sit and read, I don't even think I liked that in school. I'm going to be honest. Like, mm-hmm. I hate being a, like... It's because they fed and us the too much cat pointless came. information. I don't, I don't like it. Yeah, I really don't like reading. But it's specialty knowledge for me. Okay. So one of my favorite books, which I've read at least three times, okay. like I'm in the process of reading it a fourth time, is Becoming Supernatural. Becoming Supernatural is so amazing to me because it breaks down the scientific, um, just being that we are. You know, it it speaks about speaking over yourself and Mm. remembering your future. So many people are like caught up in the past and just remembering that. 
that they can't even successfully move forward. So I love Becoming Supernatural because it just reminds you that our words have power. We have power. We are connected to the almighty power. So I love that. And happy pocket full of money. Because I feel like <clears throat> in all different communities, ethnic groups, everything, it's a lot of negative uh, feelings and thoughts and, you know, just downward spiraling things, whether it's the secrets, whether it's the deception, fraud that's connected to money. And happy pocket full of money really shows you that you have to, it's a happy mindset. Mm. You know, it says when you give money, you give it facing up and you give it with a smile. If you can't pay something in a happy manner, you probably shouldn't pay it. You know, you should feel good about that. And so then I started moving forward. I always felt good about being responsible, but I'm happy to pay this rent. Yeah. And this this is a house over my head. Yeah. And I'm grateful that I get to pay this Absolutely. bill. I'm grateful that I get to pay my phone bill. And it I, will make me money. I love that. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> actually really great. I'm thinking about all of the moments in which I've had to give and my intention behind giving. I think that's super special. Mm-hmm. For two reasons, because um, I feel like energy is definitely transferable. Mm -hmm. And two, um, like you said, I think if you give in and you have like a negative kind of connotation or a negative energy over it, I mean, I don't think that anybody deserves that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's I like so to look people in their eyes when I pay them That's and great. give with gratitude. That's really, really great. What you give, it will come back. Get I love money. that. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, let's see what we got for you. Oh. Oh, Lord. It's fun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Would you rather win the lottery or work at the perfect job and why? Hmm. You know they say that most people who win the lottery go bankrupt within a certain amount of years. Which I think just speaks to the lack of financial literacy literacy that we have, yeah, mm -hmm. as a to, as a whole. But I mean, it would be nice to win the lottery with mentorship. Like I feel like having that much money, especially when you've never had that much money before, you definitely need a little bit of guidance and you know unmanipulated type of mentorship like something mm -hmm. where someone doesn't stand to gain too mm -hmm. much by helping you out with that um i don't know that's a different type of tax bracket that could put I you in the top one percent real quick real quick i think that's a very good point with something a large sum like that some mentorship some guidance is very necessary i've never heard anyone even speak of having mentorship they just they just get it and blow it exactly like i think about the amount of money that <clears throat> like nba players or like different um, high paid athletes make and what they're in the league for like four or five years on average. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, <clears throat> after five years and then, yes, you get these big contracts. Mm -hmm. What are you doing to like stretch your money beyond that point? Like Invest you still in. have to have generations come after you kids. You know what I mean? Like all of that to be concerned about. And if you're not working a normal job after those five years, you have the rest of your life to kind of like live off this savings unless you're doing brand partnerships or something like that so mm -hmm. i don't know like that's a hard one you don't want to work for nobody after you win a lotto no <laughs> but you can start your own businesses and then make your own perfect job i'm exactly. here for that i'm exactly. here for the lottery and then make all my perfect jobs i like my own that. businesses i like that <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. okay so we're gonna go to our questions now with um who? What is the subject matter of this episode? I forgot. The subject matter of this episode is self love. Oh, okay. Yeah. So today we are covering self love, and before we even get into the topic, um, I would love to just say how proud I am of you for stepping into this space. Like I just really see you evolve every single day that we spend together. And I don't know, it's kind of like watching a butterfly just come about because you're doing so freaking good. I'm always super proud of you. And I just think mindset is everything. You know, it starts within and the things that you're going to get ready to do. I'm, I'm like really excited to witness. So first of all, she's trying to make me cry again. <laughs> <laughs> Let it out, boo. <laughs> 
No, thank you so much. And I know, you better know, that I'm just your reflection. I watch you grow every day, and it's so empowering. It's so necessary. I mean, you are literally a sister to me. I love you, baby. And I appreciate you tremendously, honestly. Yes, it's so important to have the right people around you, especially on your self-love journey, on any journey. And you are definitely one of the right people in my life. This is like one of the couple of healthiest relationships I have like we do a lot of good work together like as far as what we pour into this space like we are really like massaging what healthy love and healthy communication and just like even uh, starting a business together like what a healthy partnership should look and feel like and yeah. I'm really enjoying the journey of Me this too. yes girl <laughs> I'm hugging you like my nugget <laughs> Honestly, and it's crazy because like I feel like even coming together and like putting together that special, those special, meaningful relationships is a part of the self-love journey. Because, yes. I mean, just being honest, a couple years ago, I had no expectations for my friends. I would just entertain just anyone. Oh, we're on the same set together or, oh, we both look cute. Let's spend endless hours by the pool together. And it's just like, no, I love myself. Yes. So I'm intentional about who I'm investing my time with, yes. my energy with. And I'm intentional about who I'm learning from because whoever you're around, you're naturally going to pick up something from them. Yes. You're naturally going to start to even speak like them. Yes. So it's very important just for me loving on myself to really be intentional about what I'm around, what I'm surrounding yes. myself, what energies, what just even characteristics so i'm so proud i love this <laughs> <laughs> okay our first question is what the subject matter means to us oh we talked about that okay mm -hmm. so <clears throat> who are we me yes who are I'm, we who i'm are a you? lover honestly i'm a lover of all things because i feel like that's the point of living like to love and be loved and um I don't know. I just, it's nothing that I can't love. Like even what someone would call like, you know, gross or would want to turn away from, it's just more information. So it's just, it's a beautiful journey of loving, loving myself, loving all of the experiences that I can learn from and grow from and therefore evolve, evolve myself, evolve my children, my family, my friends. It's just, it's all love. I feel like love is truly the only real thing. So that's why I cling to being a lover. You know what? I love that you answered that question and didn't tell us your occupation or didn't tell us, like, you know, <laughs> the things that you do. Because I feel like people do identify themselves by, like, oh, okay, I'm an architect or mm -hmm. I'm a financial advisor. But it's like, actually, no, at the core, who are you mm -hmm. for real? I feel like that's just something that I do. Yeah, I act and model. I have businesses. I love that. I love being an entrepreneur and creating things and designing things, but that doesn't make me. So if I stop doing it today or tomorrow, I'm not broken. I haven't left a piece of me behind. Exactly. This is just another thing that I'm doing. But the core of me, who I truly am, no matter what I possess, no matter where I go, is love. Which I is love that. You know what I am starting to realize about myself is that I am really disciplined but the other half of the Gemini is really fun. Like, <laughs> ah, she's <turned>. sorry. <laughs> so it's My like concern. a weird balance between like, okay, we're structured, we gotta get our work done, there's deadlines, da 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 da, da whatever. But at the same time, like, love a good time. We love a good time. I mean, we're here for a good time. Not a long time, but a good time, okay? I'm here for that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, my parents uh, were both really young when they had me. They were like 19. So they're very silly. Mm -hmm. Like, they play entirely too much. <laughs> a family reunion in our household is nothing but jokes. So we are just like laughing and goofy and cracking jokes on each other. So I think that's where my fun side comes from, for sure. Like, my dad is a nutcase. Like, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Trust me. He's literally goofy, but I feel like that's the point of life to have fun, you know, mm -hmm. like why would we be here just to mm -hmm. be struggling and mad and angry? Let yes. it go. I yes. love living light on my toes. I like if I'm too. not living light on my toes, I'm going deep in the moment like, OK, what do I need to learn right now? 
because this is a serious moment and listen, nobody makes it out alive. So mm-hmm. ain't no point in being serious all your life and just being hard up. I have no poker face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like she saw me ugly crying yesterday. <laughs> We're in public. I'm just like, ah. <laughs> Because it is what it is. I need to see what's really real. <laughs> so then I can get back to laughing and enjoying life. You know, I love that too. Like, you were being so genuine and being yourself. And, I mean, I don't think there's ever a moment where you're not being yourself, honestly. I can't. Yeah. It doesn't feel like fake for what? For who? I could go today or tomorrow. I'm going to be me. That's a fact. <laughs> love that. Okay, so our passions and our reasons. Ooh, what's your passions? I feel like my passion was dance. Like I did ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, African dance for 15 plus years. So that was like my identity girl. Like every day after school, we go to class and we practice for like three, four hours. Then I ended up going to an art school in high school. So that was part of the curriculum. Like, first and second period was dance. Then Mm -hmm. seventh and eighth was dance. And I would still go after school and do dance, dance competition. So that was a large part of my life for a long time. Then singing happened. I started doing solo music and solo singing. And now acting since I moved to L.A. So this journey of being an artist in general has been very interesting. Yeah. I would say at this current moment, my passion is still music. I love some music. Yeah. I'm not recording anymore, but like, oh my God, like just playing music, being around music, live music, like I freaking love it. Like, yeah. Love it. And my reason, Ooh, I don't want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I think my reason. Um, is still is my mom and grandmother, even though they've transitioned, um, they were huge, huge supporters of just everything. Girl, my grandmother would work a job 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and then still get up and take Ooh. us to practice. You know, she's like getting her little cat naps in the car <laughs> or on the way to and from the place. You know what I mean? Like she's she's been like a writer the whole time. And my mom. She was the one coming up with the different ideas for the showcases and doing my hair and my makeup and my I'm manager, like, your manager. Yes, <laughs> she was the manager. I mean, That's a real a mom right there. Yeah, <laughs> freaking dream team. So when she saw me like booking, you know, for me to book HBO, Insecure, for me to book rap shit, she was just like, you know, like my grandma was really, really proud. I didn't get to to share any of that with my mom, but. She did see me like on the way to this point, so mm-hmm. it's a it's a crazy ride. And I know they still up there watching too. So they're seeing their investments. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> my reasons. I okay. love that. Yeah. My mom is definitely at my core reasoning. I can see that. My mom is my everything. That's my girl. I mean, of of course, she drove over here with me when I decided to move to LA at nineteen with no apartment, no job in place, no nothing. She was just like got you (laughs) like she literally like grabbed whatever she could my mom like literally it was probably like nineteen hundred dollars she was like this is all I could give you I wish I can give you more but bam and I was like okay maybe this will pay for my first month rent in a couch or exactly (laughs) exactly make it work my mom got my back like no matter what I do she's like however I can support you I'm gonna be there and that's my reason just for life like I want to be that for my children yes I want to whatever they want to do if you decide you want to play basketball which I did and I'm five foot now but I was even shorter than my mom got a basketball goal (laughs) in the backyard I'm like I'm going to play basketball. I'm like 4'10", probably. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) No, but honestly, like, her attitude is gratitude, and I just love that. It's gratitude for every moment. I mean, it's literally her license plate. Don't go find my mom, but yeah. (laughs) She, like, she's just so grateful for the moment. She's so grateful for everything in her life because... Even if it's a lesson, it's still a blessing. That's beautiful. And she just moves in that. You know what I mean? She's grateful for every experience. And that's how I am. And I'm grateful to be here in this time, 2023. I'm alive. I'm feeling healthy. I'm feeling good. And it's just like I want to spread that joy and that gratitude and that love because I feel like, once again, that's the point of living. Amen. So if 
if you're not harnessing that, like, I, I hope to encourage you. And if you already are, I hope to keep encouraging you to keep doing it. You know, yeah. like, grab hold of that. Because the purpose of life is to have a life of purpose. And we live in that purpose when we explore what makes us happy and we explore our passions and just everything that makes our heart skip a beat. That's why mm-hmm. I like having fun. You know, if I wasn't having fun acting, I wouldn't do it. If I wasn't having fun doing this podcast with my girl, <laughs> I wouldn't do it. Like, yeah. I only want to do the things that make me happy. And yeah. it just conjures up more gratitude. And my reason is just to, like, just make the world a better place. I love to be an asset to the world, to the people around me, my friends and family. I encourage my mom just like she encourages me. And I feel like that's the love cycle that's just forever given. That's so beautiful. Oh, my nugget. <laughs> Uh, that's so interesting because, girl, sometimes I be feeling like we're living in hell. <laughs> and that's why I feel like we can make our hells and we can make our heavens yeah. because we can choose to look down all day or we can choose to look up. Yeah. You know, and I'm forever looking up. I'm forever going forward because it's just like, I'm not going to get left behind. The world is going to keep going. Yeah. And if I'm soaking, I would be crying. You know, at 17, I'm crying. I'm so confused. I'm like, well, these sisters are saying this and I need to pray this amount of times a day. And then I went to Costa Rica for one of my birthdays, and I went, like, scuba diving. I went, not scuba diving, I went snorkeling. And I saw a puffer fish in front of me. And I saw all of these beautiful, like, sea creatures and stuff. And I was just like, my God is beautiful. Amen. My God loves expression. And he, like, look at the clouds in the sky. Look at nature. It's very expressive. And this is not to condemn anything or anybody's religion or faith, but I said, my God is almighty. Mm -hmm. Like, it's beautiful, and we're beautiful, and he made us these different ways for a reason. And that's not to just go walking down the street in a thong every day, but it's just to be good and to feel good in the skin that you're in. You don't have to hide or be confined to this thing. I said, this is a puffer fish. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's expressive. And I was like... I have to love myself because I'm expressive. God wants to be expressed through me, you know, in my divine way. And I just, I think that was when I really was like, I need to love on myself. This is not loving on myself. (laughs) You know what? I think after every single breakup is when I had these realizations. Because I think once I fall in love, and I've done this time and time again, I start to kind of like, bend a little bit or mold myself to um Your not partner. not to my partner but just in a way so that they can feel comfortable and they can feel safe and they can feel like fully just like I'm there I'm invested like I'm here for this I'm riding but um I don't know as soon as we would decide to amicably amicably split or separate I realized there was always this like rediscovery of self Mm -hmm. in those moments. And um, it was always an interesting transition because I would start to be like, oh, okay, well, I'm learning this about myself or that about myself. And I felt more free also to to just express, like you said. So mm -hmm. I've had so many of those moments come up. I don't even remember when the first time was, but, like, it definitely happens after each breakup, for sure. And I feel like that's because we're evolving. So in those relationships, we're, like, learning, oh, we would like less of this, or, Mm -hmm. oh, we would like more of this, or we truly desire a lot more of this. So then when it's, like, apart, it's like, hold up, before I get into something else, let me reassess, because, baby, I need this now. I'm deserving of this. I bring to the table this. So I feel like that's a good assessment in general. And hopefully we can evolve to do that just on a regular basis. Yeah. Through the relationship. We should be able to do that in our partnerships as well. And I always get so lost in love, girl. (laughs) My girl is a lover. Okay. Any girl. (laughs) If y'all watch any of like my Instagram content or my YouTube content, it's always relationship comedy because I just love love. Like, I love being in a relationship. I really ultimately want to be married. But, um, yeah, I think relationship comedy is probably my center focus because I'm just, like, obsessed with being a wife. (laughs) I'm not going to say girl rat. A wife. You're wifey material. Period. You are a wife. You too, baby. Thank you, honey. Peep the ring, (laughs) y'all. You know, you know, you know. (laughs) I love it. Okay, so, hmm, this is a good one, too. 
What are the Ooh. reflections in your life when you show up for yourself versus when you don't? Oh, <laughs> it's so dramatically different. <laughs> it's so, it's incredible. I want everyone to show up for themselves because it's it's crazy because it's a dance. It's a balance. It's a mm-hmm. practice mm-hmm. Um, because it's funny. The other day I was asking my fiance, I was like, hun, how much do you think? Like, if it's on a scale, on a percentage scale, how much do you think I don't do what I say I'm going to do? And what I realized when I asked that question was, it's two parts to that question. One, for myself, and two, for other people. For other people, it's like 5%. If I tell somebody I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. That's if right. someone calls me at 6 a.m. and I say I'm going to be there, I'm going to get up yeah. and go be there. But yeah. if I tell myself I'm going to do it, I might not do it. And I didn't like that. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, hold on now. Because I show up for myself in ways, you know. But there's a lot of little things that I'm not doing here. And I find that when I do that, there is an honor feeling that I get and that I'm reminded of. Now, I bless all my energy centers in the shower every day and all of that. And I'm feeling balanced and good. But there is a different light that shines through me. When I don't tell someone else what I'm going to do, I just tell myself and I actually do it. Ooh. There is a strength, there is a power that yes. I feel that is like, you the boss bitch. Okay. You, you, you did that. You said you was going to do Man. it. Nobody else had to hold you accountable and you did it. And that is a trinkling, like, beautiful domino effect that I just love. It's empowering. It's very, it's just forever, like, giving. I love that because I think that's 90% of how I do everything. <laughs> like, I don't tell anybody anything. Um, honestly, y'all, this podcast that we're working on right now, like, we've been working on this for nine months, and I haven't dropped a peep about it, for real. Nobody um, knows anything. That's what I'm saying, unless you've been involved. <laughs> so when you all get this content, it's going to be fresh, fresh yes. off the press. Like, mm-hmm. And we've been working on this for probably a little less than a year. I really just I'm not a talk about it girl, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. So in that same that same respect, like definitely a be about it person, and and it feels good to just be about it. Yeah, don't talk about it. You already know what you're yeah. talking for. You wasting time. You could be doing it. Yeah, <laughs> showing up for myself in my career is perfect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. I don't think that I fall very difficult when it comes to that. But showing up for myself. Emotionally, y'all see me like playing with these pants. Like, <laughs> <laughs> showing yeah. up for myself emotionally and is tough. It's um, a practice. Practicing it, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm learning to be vulnerable, whatever that is. Um, I'm learning to express or <laughs> who is like so uncomfortable. <laughs> like, I am learning to. Um, Love on myself in that way to know that those things are connected to the divine feminine mm-hmm. and the divine feminine is very beautiful. Yes. Um, I did not live a super, um, I want to say soft, like the soft life where I just wasn't in hustle mode all the time. Like, so learning what that is, I think is connected to that emotional space. So that's how I'm choosing to show up myself right now like I'm heavy into therapy going once a week um I learned yoga and meditation and I studied last year for like a full nine months I was just doing hot yoga every day oh hot yoga is so transforming oh my god (laughs) it was just different from going to the gym and picking up these heavy weights and slamming them down it was like I get to wake up and hear beautiful meditation music I get to be around a, a community of people who are speaking to each other in love and light every single morning. That was transformative for me in general because I'm from 59th and Wood Street in Chicago. <laughs> people are not sending love and light yeah. <laughs> when you are trying to catch the bus or get to work in the morning. It's really a lot of energy in that city. Not bad energy, but it's just like we're we're on the move. It's hustle and yeah. bustle. It's tough. Um, Chicago ain't no joke. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm from Baltimore. Yeah, I know. So. so I know you know too. <laughs> <laughs> so this softer, more gentler life is really, it's a, an interesting pursuit. Yeah. And I think 
we like I think it's new for us mm -hmm. as a whole. Yeah. Like us showing up for ourselves and actually taking time for self mentally, physically, like when was the last time you took a Epsom salt bath? Right. You know, like that's a new dance that we're doing because we are so used to the hustle and bustle and catching up and everything like that. So I'm excited about the evolution of us as a whole because the more people who show up for themselves, the better the world is going to be, okay? Less people grumpy, angry, easy to curse somebody out. It's like we're, we have more patience because we've already done the work for ourselves this morning and we can like, have a little more patience, a little more softness for others. Exactly. And there's a huge benefit to loving on yourself because the better that you are able to love on yourself, it's inevitable that you're going to love on everybody else around you way better. Yeah. It's like super connected. It is. I love it. Yeah. So. Hmm. Ooh. Were you taught how to show up for yourself or did you learn on your own? <laughs> Okay, wait. <laughs> so, taught. I think um, there wasn't like a manual, right? So, if we're going based on just examples and things that we saw in the home, I'll be honest, like, my mom was super sacrificial, and so was my grandmother. Like, my mm. grandma had four kids, my mom, single mom, two kids. Uh, they were very selfless and would just give and give and give and give and give of self. Mm -hmm. It was very rare that I saw them pour that into themselves. Now, in ways of how they dressed, you know, taking that extra time to do their makeup and their hair and looking beautiful and looking fabulous, like they definitely made sure to do that. I have beautiful women in my family. Yes. So do. gorgeous. But as far as showing up for themselves in um, the ways of like, you know, like I said, emotionally and nurturing that inner them, mm -hmm. like the inner mom, inner grandma. Like, I really feel like I would have conversations with them often about the lack of that in the space. So I do feel like that kind of thing, that, that's why it's so strange. I'm learning it on my own. Mm -hmm. But the other stuff, you know, them going to work every day, how to show up for their families, mm -hmm. how to, like, I learned that from them for sure. Yeah. I feel that too. Well, I feel like it's a different generation. Right. You know, because I saw my mom show up for herself in a sense where if she wanted to do this business venture, she's going to put these pieces in place and she's mm. going to start that business no matter who says it's a bad idea or whatever, she's going to see it through. And I saw her like journal, I saw her, you know, do these different things. But I feel like now as we evolve, like I have kind of like, you know, we're the same. But I'm living a different life. Yeah. I'm living by myself in right. L.A. You know, now I have my partner. But it's just like, I feel like it's an evolution. But my mom definitely taught me um, different ways. Just even if she says, well, does that feel good to you yeah. or does it not? You know, and you can say that to someone. Like, I didn't like it when you did this. Like, yeah. my mom taught me that at a young age. Like, Emotional if someone, awareness. Yeah, if someone does something that you don't like and there's a connection then you can say that, you know, it really didn't make me feel good when you did this to me. I love that. And that was important for me because I feel like people have to understand, and I'm not one to really tell adults about themselves. Right. Like, you know, I feel like nine times out of ten, you know if you're doing something that, you know, you wouldn't want somebody to do to you. And that was my mom's biggest thing, like, do unto others as you would have others do unto you. So it was like my mom gave me that permission to let my feelings be known. And mm. I think that's very important in showing up for yourself. Yes. Not to mask it, not to act like something didn't happen or you don't care, but to really show up for those emotions, whether it's good or bad. Because she would even say that, like, I really love that in the state of gratitude. You know, I really liked when you did that. Mm -hmm. And that's showing up for yourself because you're conjuring up more of it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So my mom taught me whether it's good or bad, speak on it because it's real. Yes. And it's good. And yes. it's, it's just more information. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. And we are definitely excited about more different topics that we want to talk to you about. So like, subscribe, and comment below. We want to share ways with you and have an open discussion about ways that you guys are practicing self-love in your life. and Loving on yourself. Exactly. Exactly. And so. truly what love is to you. Mm -hmm. We want to know. Yes. <laughs> I'll see y'all next time.